Hi chess friends, this is King's Executor covering round 9 of the World Chess Championship match between Anand and Carlson. Um, going into this round, Carlson was leading by 2 points and Anand had the white pieces. So, uh, with this game included, 4 games to come and having the white pieces, Anand basically is forced to push it and is forced to attack and this is what we what we saw today so Anand opened with d4 knight f6 c4 and e6 which uh, already shows that the Nimzo Indian defense might be probable uh, of course we can go back into a Queen's Gambit declined line Knight c3 inviting bishop b4. There are other ways to play, for example, knight here, and if check, then even this knight coming to d2. To not allow the knight on c3 to be taken and double white's pawns. So a3 would be coming next. But instead, Anand invited the Nimzo Indian, and basically there are um, at least two main moves: Queen C2 and F3. F3 uh, takes away the E4 square from the knight, and uh, Queen C2 doesn't allow the doubling of the pawns because of the queen might take on c3 f3 was played d5 and a3 the main move and now white has this doubled pawns um, therefore white has the bishop pair to compensate him but the question is how good is this bishop pair if these pawns are doubled and you know such a pawn as on f3 closes the position rather so the bishop pair might not mean as much uh, black meanwhile hopes to play against this worse pawn structure and this is a highly theoretical line c5 and the pawn exchange in the center e3 and c4 taking away the tension in the center gaining space controlling d3 a very active square for the bishop for example and it's not easy to attack this pawn chain the only move would be e4 at some point but that needs preparation and there is no b3 move available so it's very interesting this pawn, pawn uh, structure in the center. Knight e2, knight c6, and g4. So we have a big um, unbalanced position here, big um, a, a big grade of unbalanced position castles bishop g2 knight a5 and castles knight b3 the rook was attacked and b5 black gains space on the queen side and white is trying to play in the center and or the king side knight g3 this knight does a good job in attacking e4 or f5 or even h5 so it supports a lot of nice squares a5 g5 kicking the knight e4 the bishop pair uh, white was what was uh, uh resolved from the bishop pair so to speak 
rook a6 and notice that this rook is defended this rook uh, is very active here it can defend along the 6th rank against the pawn pushes against any sacrifices maybe after a pawn might be provoked to come forward it's not easy to sacrifice on such a pawn also this rook might play on the queen side or the center e5 and controlling more squares in the center taking away this knight squares um, and adding a little fuel to the fire on the king side knight to c7 f4 b4 and after solving the tension on the queen side f5 was played and basically the theme of this game here of this um, middle game position is black uh, white space on the king side and the attacking chances there and uh, blacks passed pawn on the queen side so that passed pawn to me for Carlson on the black side looked like a bigger trump than this attack here because an attack can be defended but a passed pawn is always a passed pawn so b3 here queen f4 and now the knight has to come back for defensive pu uh, purposes f6 and now there are two ways to play there is even pawn takes and uh, if pawn takes here you see it's uh, it looks a bit scary this open file but after king h8 um, any mating ideas are met by rook g8 um, afterwards the queen can come maybe into the game can defend uh, the knight can come here or here and afterwards if this knight has moved the queen can come out attacking the pawn and reminding white of his own king and of the past pawns here so this was possible but we saw g6 by Carlson and now the question is really how is white gonna attack on the last remaining open file for his pieces on the h file is there a way to mate black queen h4 knight e8 because that knight is very uh, important in defending g7 so there is no mate and with this knight basically white has only one chance in mating on h7 something like that so white needs additional pieces for mostly the rook on the h file notice that if you just uh, play queen h6 as played in the game and push with your pawns this queen could be forced uh, in some other uh, similar positions to be exchanged if you manage to have a queen on f8 or that queen might even be trapped uh, if uh, a knight could hop into f5 or something like that but this is not the theme of this game just for you to know it's not so easy for white in general to mate here um, I have a game myself with such a attack on the h file and uh, this went well for me uh, you can find it in the games I've played with the white pieces b2 now making something of the past pawn 
and rook f4 allowing black to have a second queen and now there's one move that holds everything together for white bishop f1 after that queen d1 would be a move and after rook h4 threatening mate in one queen h5 would be forced and that basically wins a piece for black just for this one pass pawn here which was given for that after rook takes h5 uh, bishop f5 saves the day for black and afterwards e6 would be met by knight takes queen takes and rook f5 uh, notice that rook h4 a cautious looking move would be met by pawn takes pawn and now there's a, a juicy square for the queen on f2 rook g4 would be forced then check and check and the bishop cannot go to g2 because of the hanging rook so rook g2 and that uh, that position would be winning for black so rook f5 or rook e5 would be forced if rook e5 pawn takes queen e3 covering f2 and after such a combination rook f3 bishop g2 and bishop d5 check is a rather drawish position uh, again much tension but should be holdable um, let's drop back to this position um, again this was the game position and if r bishop here rook there and the queen is taken after bishop h3 Anand said he thought this move might be good and after takes takes he saw black has bishop has queen b6 and after rook takes h5 threatening mate on h uh, h7 black has this check Ch uh, and the queen coming to g6 again saving the day and uh, this position is of course better for black because he has an extra piece let's just look at one further line here rook f5 is possible um, just to make clear here the queen would be hanging so queen takes pawn and now rook e5 something like uh, queen a6 or queen d6 and yeah uh, this should be a draw as well though black has a extra pawn so basically the, the move to play for white was bishop f1 but Anand blundered big time playing knight f1 with the idea to get this knight into e7 and uh, maybe sacrifice on g6 but with this move white overlooked queen e1 and now the rook cannot came uh, cannot come to uh, h4 because simply this is taken and now black is up a whole rook for just one passed pawn here basically for nothing and this is why 
after this queen e1 move Anand resigned uh, basically Anand had uh, other lines in mind with queen d3 uh, and stuff he didn't see this queen e1 move uh, controlling h4 and before the knight was on g3 so it's maybe easier to overlook that h4 is uh, diagonal here to be blocked to have uh, to be blocked for the rook to be able to come to h4 let's just uh, go back to this posi position N uh, knight e8 queen h6 b2 now there could be knight e2 queen a5 knight f4 bishop e6 takes takes and no f7 check here because that pawn can be taken and the rook cannot take on f7 because of this b1 move and you can even take the rook first and then uh, threaten to um, or then promoting your uh, queen, your pawn into a queen. Uh, if instead of f7 check, bishop h3, that would be a good move. Queen must protect e6, bishop g4, rook f7, queen h3 attacking e6, and after knight defends it, queen g2 attacking b2, queen a1 is possible, Queen c2, rook comes back to be able to come to b8 as well after rook b1 attacking the b2 pawn and h4 wouldn't work really because after rook b3 black has play here h5 would be basically wrong because of takes and if queen takes pawn uh, rook b3 with the plan to go to g3 afterwards um, you can of course not take here because then the pawn is gonna promote but if you don't take it and if you just move for example here then after c3 uh, you can play this intermediate move something like that check takes and king g3 and after this you can even play down here still complicated c2 f7 check and if king takes we have this and if this rook takes attacking the pawn and here the pawns are hanging if check king for example here takes takes and that would be difficult here for white so instead king e3 to cover this maybe even not allowing this just this way and if you promote takes takes and with this check this should be again a draw okay so there was a lot in this uh, in this position um, again if knight sorry if knight e2 queen a5 Knight f4 and this sequence and bishop h3 Queen a6 bishop g4 what we just saw this is a line white should have tried to play but it's very long-winded and difficult to see all of this and here you have to play rook g2 really to cover this bishop and this check here rook f2 just check and now 
black uh, is very strong here. Bishop d1 would be forced, and after knight b5, pawn takes, pawn takes, king f2, knight takes d4, and now c2 is coming. So it's a long winded uh, variation to c calculate. And after this b2 move, rook f4, check, and knight f1 was played, allowing black to control the h4 square and this is the position where Anand resigned to Carlson and this made Carlson be the leader by three points on game nine so there are three games to come and Anand uh, is forced to basically win three games in a row to keep the points level and this is basically very, very unlikely. Uh, he wouldn't have to win with black as well, which is even more unlikely. Um, yeah, I think the match is basically over. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if Anand would just resign the whole match. And um, yeah. Um, there's basically nothing left to play for and if there is only one draw in the next games say next game would be a draw that would mean automatically that uh, Carlson is the world champion and I don't think that Anand can win three times in a row against Carlson so I think it's official or semi-official that Carlson is the new world champion of chess. Thanks a lot for watching and I hope you enjoyed, got something out of it. Please comment, share the video and foremostly subscribe. Thanks.